What is up, Responsible Day Traders? Today is Sunday, November 27th, 2022. I am Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. So we're here today for another week. We had great Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a wonderful week off, or wonderful few days off. Uh, we did take the week off in Responsible Day Trading. Not so much a new profit trader. So, you know, it's been a busy week, but it was great. We do have a Black Friday slash Cyber Monday special running. Uh, so we are offering 70% off. You'll be able to see the link here and you'll be able to click it down below. So if you want to check out what it's like to be a responsible day trader, guys, 70% off. We only offer that one time a year. And so we wanted to extend that to you guys to say, hey, if you want to be a part of this, we want to be there for you. So last week did exactly what we expected, moved like molasses, <laughs> okay? And so when it moves slow like that, you know, there's not a lot of players in the game. So we just wanna be careful, we wanna be aware, we wanna pay attention. Things are moving a lot slower than normal because we're in the holiday season. We've got Christmas coming up, New Year's, there's a lot of big players who've taken some time off. They're spending time with their families. And so you may not uh, see as much movement as we would typically see throughout the year. So we just wanna pay attention, be aware, and just, you know, if you're gonna trade, Make sure you're looking whenever it is giving these quick exits. We want to pay attention to those. If it's showing on the bigger charts that we have a chance to turn around and pull back, really pay attention. Either pull in your stop a little bit or just really be prepared to exit early in some of these trades. Are some of them going to run to their target? Absolutely. Are all of them? Probably not at this time of year. So. All right, so let's go ahead, check out the news, and then we'll check out the market. Okay, wow, we've got a lot going on this week. Uh, we don't have anything on Monday, but Tuesday, half an hour after the market opens, we've got consumer confidence at 9 a.m. Wednesday, we got quite a bit going on. So we have some pre-market, we have some aftermarket, and then we have 12.30, Powell speaks. So we just wanna be aware of all of that. Thursday, some pre-market, aftermarket, Friday, pre-market. So there's a lot of things that are going on. Hey, maybe this will help move the market some. You know, we'd really love that to have some good opportunities if you're gonna spend some time in it. But you know, guys, this is also a great time to learn how to be patient. So, um, you know, just watching it and being patient is a great thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out this daily chart and see what happened last week. Now, when we're looking at this daily chart right here, we wanna look and see what happened right in here. Uh, so we were hanging out at this area. It did look like it wanted to push down. We had a reversal bar down, reversal bar up, and then it just kind of hung out there and finally got a pop up. Well, the MACDs agreed and they popped up with it. We equaled this previous pivot point and we can see what's happening now. We're pulling back. So what happened up here is pretty significant. We had this tiny, tiny, tiny little reversal bar. And with that, we typically see a pullback. So we saw all of these big bars, big, 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 and then this tiny little bar. And that definitely does indicate a pullback. We did see the weakening of the MACDs pulling into the Bollinger Band here just a little bit. So we may see this come back into the area of the EMAs. And guys, when we see that, sometimes what happens is it loses its momentum to the upside and we get a nice strong push down. But the MACDs are going to have to do something like this. Now, this does look very similar to this, just on a smaller scale. And the price kind of looks a little similar to it. Didn't quite push up as high. I really did expect this to push up a little bit higher, maybe reach up to the area of that resistance area that's been happening up there. But we didn't see that quite happen. What's really gonna be the kicker is what's gonna happen with this MACD? Is this MACD gonna stay purple, get inside the Bollinger Bands and cross it? Because if we start seeing the potential to cross that bottom Bollinger Band, we're gonna start seeing something probably along the lines of this right here. Now, if it doesn't cross that bottom Bollinger Band and it just pulls back a little bit here, we may see it push up. I mean, technically what it looks like at this current moment is the possibility for an M-pivot. And if we have an M-pivot, we're gonna expect it to pull back down somewhere in the range of down here or maybe even all the way down in this area. If it does that, 
we are going to have potentials for divergence because it's going to be a lot of work for these MACDs to get down below everything and get all the way back down here. It's going to be a lot of work. Now, I want to come back here and talk about this price action right in here. You know, I've been talking a lot about what we like to see, the pull away from the EMAs and then the move back above it if we're going to expect the price to continue up. So this is the first time we've actually pulled away from the EMA. Uh, we didn't pull away here, but this is the first time we pulled away. So if we're going to expect it to go up, we're going to want to see the price pull up higher and we're going to see the we're going to want to see the MACDs go higher too. We don't want to see them creating any kind of divergence because if they do, that is going to be really um, indicative of a push back down. So, you know, I don't know if it's that I'm an optimist or what, but I just keep expecting this to finally eventually break this area and continue up. So we'll just have to watch it. We'll have to pay attention and know exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the 28,657. Now we can see by looking at the 233 here and such, we had a pretty decent gap. It was almost a 20 point gap when this pulled down. Now I'm making this video a little later than usual because I was really hoping I would have at least one price bar countdown, but we can see how slow this is moving. The market has been open for almost an hour and we have barely made it halfway through one bar. Man, is that gonna be telling us what's happening? Are we looking for some slow, slow movements? <laughs> we may be. Now this BB looks like it's extremely strong. It's gonna have that look guys, because we had this big gap happen and this BB was very, very weak moving up here. And now we've had this big drop. So the BB kind of plays in tune with that. It doesn't mean that we're going to continue down because we're still above the zero line. We may see another bar hang out here. We may see this kind of close back up in and move back up to the upside. Uh, so what's happening right here though, is we have broken back above this area. We did it back here. We never got back any further. When it pulled in here, we did have some divergence. Now we have what looks like strong EMAs open to the upside. So I would kind of be expecting a turnaround and a push back up. Is it going to happen from this area right here? Well, we're going to have to watch the MACDs and see what happens throughout time. Um, but if it doesn't happen there, then I would definitely be looking for it to pull down just a little bit further into this area to see if we're going to uh, have a bounce back up to the upside and possibly even somewhere down in here because we did have this area of resistance hold. And so we've got a couple of areas along the way that could really like I like to say, hold up the party and move this back to the upside. I really see reasons for this to go up, even though it's pulled back. We had the white BBs, we had divergence, it's pulling back. Uh, like I said, maybe that's the optimist in me, but in the immediate, in the current, we're not seeing that play out so much. So let's look at these um, trading charts and see what they have to say. So you can see we haven't even made it through our first bar on the 10,946. We're getting closer and closer to it, but we're not there. Now we have what looks like, once again, we're gonna talk about this. We have what looks like a strong, strong pull to the downside. But we have to remember we had such a big gap from where the market closed and where it opened that it's gonna give that look of strength whenever that happens. And it can slow down really, really quickly and push it back in the opposite direction. I mean, I, I also want to talk something you know, just a little bit here. If we can look over the last few days, not even just Thanksgiving, but we can see these are not creating a lot of bars, guys. So it really is moving very, very slow. And we have to be extremely aware when that's happening. So right now we're pulling back once again, like I said, into this area. We've also got the EMA lining up from the 10,946 here. We have an area of support. And remember, these aren't exact numbers. So you can see it gets a little above, a little below. So somewhere in this area is what I like to say. Okay, well, you know, that's a big area. Yes, it is. Um, but we may see some things happen within this box and in this frame that can tell us that we're looking for the pushback to the upside. Now, like I said, in the absolute immediate, <laughs> it'd be hard to look for that move to the upside, except 
what we saw happening on the 233. Right here, we had some major divergence on the 233, but we've got a lot of strength coming down at it. So just because we had this divergence doesn't mean it's necessarily gonna push up right now. We'd like to see a little bit of divergence happening in the 1597 in order to push that back up. But you know, if we're looking at the overall, and we're gonna come back to the daily chart. If we're looking at the overall, it does have um, some ability to pull back right now. We've created a lot of space between the EMA and the price action. We got the tiny little bars. So the initial move will probably be to the downside, like I was talking about in these areas here. And you can just barely see where I drew that third box and lo and behold, what does it line up with? But the support area, the EMA on the daily chart. So if it doesn't push it up immediately, immediately from here, we may see it hang out, pull back a little bit, pick up the strength to the downside. So these are all little areas we can expect it to hold up the party and not really just dive right through there, but just knowing about those areas, being aware, paying attention, knowing what we can expect is always what keeps us ahead of the game. So my friends, that is gonna wrap it up for today. Remember, we've got Cyber Monday going to the end of the day on Monday. There's a lot of good deals between you profit trader and responsible day trading that you can check out. Hopefully you were able to take advantage of that 50% off that we had going on on Cyber Friday for you profit trader and the 70% off that we have going on for responsible day trading. I've already seen a few of you take advantage of that and I'm looking forward to working with you, spending time with you and just really watching you grow. It is really why we are here. We wanna be able to see you move through these issues that you may be having with trading, or maybe you've never traded a day in your life and you want to get on that train. Obviously, it's not gonna happen overnight. It is gonna take time. It is learning a new skill. I can't tell you how much I think of it like learning a new language. And with me working on Spanish, it's taken way longer than I expected. Um, but you know, we can be more like the Duolingo of day trading or, you know, as some may know, more like the Rosetta Stone of day trading, where we're just helping you build those building blocks, put them together, really understand what to expect and know how to handle yourself and become fluent and flow with the market. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap that up. I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.